Recently, Tesla has released a new beta for what they're calling is the new version of full self-driving. Now, this is not fully self-driving because while the car can get you from point A to point B and it will drive itself there, it still requires you to have your hands on the wheels at all time to take over if any mistakes were to happen. And let me tell you something, you're going to be taking over a lot. Now, I do not have full self-driving on my Model 3. I did not get that. I did not want it. Uh, but my roommate Brendan does because he's a brave soul. And he got the 10.2 update of full self-driving on his Model 3. And as soon as it hit his car, we immediately went out for a couple drives. So all the footage you're going to see from this point forward is footage from the first couple drives we took in the car once the beta was downloaded and installed. As you can see, there's a completely new UI on the screen, giving you so much more information on what the car can see. What's most important though is the dotted line that you can see that goes in front of the car. That is actually telling you the path the car is taking on its way to wherever you told it to go. This is important because it means that you can actually preemptively catch a mistake the car might make a little further up in the road, maybe taking a wrong turn or something like that. Now, in the first few drives that we took with this car, I gotta admit, it's kind of just okay. Um, it drives interestingly. It's extremely aggressive on the pedal. It takes off when it hits the gas, and it also brakes like you're literally about to get into an accident. Um, but it does take turns pretty well. It's actually very confident with turns, with a couple exceptions. But for the most part, it does turns really well. One of the times where it didn't really do a turn properly was when we were exiting a parking lot, and we needed to go across three to four lanes of traffic to go into the left lane going west from our direction. Now obviously there's traffic from both sides coming towards the car, and as it was getting to that point, it didn't really want to take the turn. It had multiple times when it was safe for it to take a turn, but it didn't really want to take it, so we had to take over and actually make the turn ourselves. Now in a situation like this, I'd rather take the turn myself than have the car take it when it doesn't feel safe. I, I absolutely am for having to take over in that situation. Another weird turn was actually when we were trying to enter the driveway of a McDonald's. As it was approaching McDonald's, it braked extremely hard to go into the driveway of the business next to McDonald's. It was close, but when it noticed that it was making the mistake of going into the wrong driveway, it actually sped back up aggressively, then re-braked aggressively and took the turn also too tight because it actually clipped the curb a little bit going into the McDonald's parking lot. This one isn't horrible, but if there was somebody directly behind us, they might have gotten confused as to what we were trying to do. And I gotta admit, after the first couple drives, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's also not good. At the exact same time as the car is confident in its driving, it also makes really weird moves that most people don't do on the road. But this kind of makes sense because it's a computer trying to learn how to drive almost like a human does. Autopilot on the highway drives a lot better than most people on the highway do, but full self-driving on the streets, it actually kind of reminds me of a student driver that's trying to learn before they take their driver's test. And it might actually be worse than a student driver at times. See, because the, the difference is that humans have human brains and they see what other people are doing on the road, they can sometimes predict what might happen in the surrounding area around them. Computers don't really do that. So I don't feel as safe in the car that's driving itself right now because it doesn't really know what the car behind us, in front of us, and to the side of us might do at any given moment. In all honesty, being in the car for a little bit, it felt like it was a liability to be on the road. It's too aggressive on the pedal. It's too aggressive in its braking, which in situations could get you rear-ended. It takes turns confidently and at the exact same time isn't confident enough to take specific turns, which can also get you into an accident. But at the exact same time as I say that, we need brave souls like Brendan to beta test this. We need people to continue to get these cars out there on the road, doing this giving data back to Tesla so we can continue to tweak the car to make its full self-driving better and safer for all of us on the road. But right now, I don't know if I could call 10.2 and the upcoming 10.3 betas a beta. It feels more like an alpha at this point. And now it's not my car, so I don't drive it every day, but he does. And the more he's tested it, the more he's come home and told me how, you know, it's kind of dangerous. And he doesn't exactly feel safe in it. But again, it comes back to we need to drive it so that it is better for all of us in the future. But anyways guys, that's all I gotta say really quick about the 10.2 beta of full self-driving. As more updates get rolled out of Brendan's car, I'll keep updating with new videos on it, seeing how it improves or 
Maybe it gets worse. Any questions at all on full self driving or Tesla in general, throw them in the comments. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I mean, I have videos in the past about when I got my Model 3, how I got it really quickly, um, and some of the best ways to get a Tesla right now. Any questions, again, leave them down below. I'll see you guys in whatever video I do next. Who knows?